I wanted to make this video to spread some awareness or maybe just bring some attention to the possibilities of the humble keyboard. I think it's really interesting that after millions of years of evolution that humans have developed in such a way that it's even possible to really use a keyboard. It's kind of amazing that I can take the words of my brain and coordinate those thoughts with my fingers to make thousands of tiny, extremely accurate movements to turn those thoughts into code. So my channel is pretty brand spanking new, which I've named If Coding Were Natural because I'm a software engineer. And I guess I was kind of poking fun at the fact that uh, often coding is very unnatural. I'm not entirely sure what direction I want to take this channel, but uh, definitely something along the lines of, of coding. Naturally, I've decided to make one of my first videos um, a essentially a review of a keyboard. I, I bet if I asked the, the average software engineer, um, sorry, not average, if I took a random sampling and asked them, what is your number one productivity tool that's not your computer and isn't a piece of software? I bet that for most people, their keyboard would not come to mind. And I think this is because keyboards aren't really thought of in that way. They're just a, a thing that you need to use to do your job. But if you're going to use a keyboard, then you might as well try to maximize what you can get out of it. You, you've probably seen this coming by now, but one of the tools that's become an indispensable part of my toolkit is the Moonlander Mark I. I've kind of touched on this, but a programmable keyboard is what makes the magic happen because you can program it to fit your exact needs. For example, I uh, frequently I want to highlight all of the text to the right or left of my cursor, but it, it's kind of awkward to push a command and shift and then find the, the right arrow button. It just feels uncomfortable. So let's fix that. And then I'm going to pick these two keys. These ones right here, they're, they're kind of like arrows. So I'm going to put the, the keys right here. Here we go. I got it. Now I can just go to my movement layer and, uh, oh yeah, that's, that's a lot nicer. As another example of being able to fit things to my specific needs, I, I write a lot of JavaScript and TypeScript in my job. So I'm uh, constantly writing arrow functions, uh, which if you don't know what an arrow function is, it's just something like, uh, oh my gosh, that you make this arrow thing. Before getting the moon lander, I had already gone pretty quick. It was a very automatic movement to press those two keys. But since I've got this keyboard, I have assigned those two keys on my symbols layer right here and here, the J and K. And that makes that movement even faster than it was before. But now it's also a lot more comfortable. And speaking of comfort, the, the moon lander is a really comfortable keyboard to type on primarily because of the thumb cluster. I actually deal with a lot of elbow and wrist pain because of an injury that I sustained back in high school and the constant movement of pressing the enter key on a, a normal keyboard uh, it used to be really irritating and, and this was actually the reason why I got the moon lander in the first place and it's not like you know I could have been just a normal person and gotten an ergonomic keyboard just kidding I actually got the Microsoft sculpt and I hated it anyway unlike a normal person who would have just gotten a, a better ergonomic keyboard, uh, like the, you know, the normal kind of ergonomic keyboards. I, I jumped straight into the moon lander and I, I don't regret it. Sorry about the tangent, but anyway, here's the general idea I would aim for with this keyboard specifically. So first on a, a regular keyboard, you have a lot of keys that are kind of on the, the outside of the keyboard that get pressed a lot, like the, the enter key, you know, delete key, backspace, escape, tab. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a couple of them. I also used to use the home and end key quite a bit. Anyway, you want to move those keys that are normally uh, on the outside of your keyboard inward. The thumb cluster makes this uh, a lot easier. Uh, also, I guess is a bit of a disclaimer, I still have some of the outside keys in the same spot, specifically my control, alt, shift, and tab. And I did this because uh, it still feels comfortable and I didn't have to retrain my muscle memory for those keys. However, I did move my escape key to this spot right here because I access it frequently and uh, the movement from going like this is way more comfortable than the movement going all the way up here, which is this is where the default location is for the escape key. The second thing is to use layers. Uh, you'd be crazy not to use layers on this keyboard, uh, but uh, this keyboard has uh, actually fewer physical keys than normal keyboards. Uh, well, I guess when I say normal keyboards, I'm thinking of something uh, like this. Anyway, I try to group my layers by functionality. So I have a, a layer for symbols and 
I have a layer for like my utility type functions or controlling different aspects of my keyboard. Sorry, <laughs> that's this layer. And I have a layer for accessing applications. And I also have a layer dedicated to my number pad as well as a layer right here that I use to practice Colmac. Anyway, that should be a pretty obvious tip. Use layers. For tip number three, don't aim for complexity. You can get really complex with this keyboard. I personally don't recommend that you do that. You should aim to make your layout easy for you to remember. One way that you can do this is from grouping your layers by function, just like I, I talked about. Uh, another one is to strategically assign keys by pre-planning what you're going to commit to muscle memory for frequently press keys or to make key assignments based on uh, mnemonics. For example, uh, as a Vim user, I use H, J, K, and L to move left, down, up, and right. So I strategically assigned H, J, K, and L to be my arrow keys on my movement layer. And that just makes it super natural to use H, J, K, and L in Vim, but also the same keys in other programs. As mentioned before, I type this key combination very frequently to do arrow functions. So I strategically assigned those two keys right here and here on my symbols layer. To anybody else, there's probably no obvious reason why I would assign those keys right here to the spot. But it works for me because it's so ingrained in my muscle memory. As an example of using mnemonics to help with remembering where everything is on your keyboard, I have my media layer where, for example, I can push my up and down arrows to adjust my volume. And I also use P for play and pause. I push it once to play and double press for pause. It's nice for when I'm controlling like YouTube or something like that. Although I guess I use a space bar for YouTube. Okay, honestly, I don't really use this, but I remember what it is. I also have my apps layer. So when I come here, I push P for Postman, O for OBS, M for messages, and I also can double tap it to go to music, N for notion, and also double tap it to go to just the, the notes app. And I have things like C for Chrome, F for Firefox, T for terminal, Z for zoom, S for Slack. And that makes it very easy to switch between the different applications that I am frequently opening. The goal of this video was not to be an in-depth guide or review on the moon lander, just to bring light to the fact that there's likely a lot of untapped potential in something as boring as a keyboard. As programmers, we often focus on improving a lot of different things, but when was the last time getting better at using my keyboard uh, make your list? I mean, you use it every day, 